Are you sitting comfortably? Good, then I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a world in where children were connected to nature. They would play outside for hours and hours, creatively and imaginatively, losing all track of time. Children were happier and healthier, and then creeping through the landscape came technology. So subtly, people barely noticed it at first, and then bang, it was everywhere. Children would stay indoors for days on end. They would play on computer games, alone in their rooms, speaking to friends via a keyboard. Even on journeys, they failed to look outside and were glued to their screens, increasingly unaware of a life beyond the virtual. Behavioural problems, obesity and depression all began to increase and the world became a much sadder place. But nobody wants a story with an unhappy ending, so the story doesn't end there. A group of artists calling themselves the Wild Things decided to take emergency outdoor action and inspire children to embark on a magical journey to create a very different story. Our aim is to deliver our performance and creative learning experiences to family and children of 10 years and under from Tang Hall and the surrounding area. Our mission is to offer a series of workshops to the groups and avoid parachuting in for a one-off session. This will enable participants to build stronger connections with us, each other, as well as to the place and explore theme, some of the themes that we will be covering, such as growing, recycling and sustainability on a deeper level. The Wild Things are a group of artists who, through a fusion of storytelling, promenade performance and play, all in the great outdoors, will enable participants to tell their own stories and play a part in building up a relationship with local places and each other. Hi there. Here at Wild Things, we decided we'd like to perform in Promenade, as it is an engaging and inclusive performance mode that encourages audience participation. The audience follows the performance on their feet and can inevitably become immersed in the spectacle. The spectator and performer's roles become ill-defined. Promenade theatre often blurs the physical space between performer and spectator. Sometimes seeing actors deliberately performing in and around the audience. We believe that Promenade Theatre would enable children and their families to really play a key role in the performative activities and story making. Both watching us and us watching them. A conversation together responding to our surroundings. Becoming immersed in nature and all it has to offer. Our site specific location is St Nick's. Our love for nature led us to choose this park with its varying sections of wild wooded undergrowth and open fields with stone features. Children and their families are welcome and love to explore this easily accessible haven within our urban city of York. We aim to awaken the explorer within the minds of our audience, children and adults alike. St Nick's is full of history for the children to discover and learn about. We would like to tell them of its journey from its neglected state to becoming the wonderful nature-loving haven that it is now. It began as a rubbish dump, a landfill site, and with careful planning and development, it has been made into a community area for people to thrive. Our mission is to deliver a message of hope and positivity with sensitivity and for, not, for it not to come across as finger-wagging or patronising. We'd like to empower and re-enchant participants with their local area and awaken their senses to be more aware of the world around us and go away and share this narrative with others. One fine day, the wild things left their treehouse in the woods of St Nick's and through a fusion of storytelling, drama and outdoor play, they began to re-enchant the children and adults of York with the natural world, creating awareness of some of the issues our planet faces and transforming children into becoming future stewards of nature. A wise wizard called Richard Louvre created a spell book called The Last Child in the Woods, coining the phrase Nature Deficit Disorder. What, what does, does that, that mean? mean? Through extensive research, I have found a direct correspondence between lack of contact with nature and an increase in childhood depression, obesity and behavioural problems. Once we reconnect children with the natural world, there is a significant increase in well-being, self-esteem and connection with others. 
Step on it, wild things. There is no time to lose. Then the scientists declared a sixth mass extinction and told terrible tales of doom and gloom. The people were bombarded by depressing statistics about their impact on the environment daily, yet largely these stark warnings passed the people by. It was as if by magic the wild things happened across a radical environmental sage. He introduced himself as Paul Kings North and spoke wise words from his spell book. In order to reconnect with the natural world, we need to give nature a narrative. There are too many quants. The people who give scientific explanations ultimately alienate us from the message. What the world needs is poets who can captivate the hearts and minds of the people and help inspire the next generation to build a relationship of care and respect for the natural world. The wild things started to grow excited as ideas of how to reconnect the people with nature began to swirl and whirl like autumn leaves on a windy day. The plain fact is that the planet does not need more successful people, but it does desperately need more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers and lovers of every kind. It needs people who live well in their places. It needs people of moral courage, willing to join the fight to make the world habitable and humane. The wild things knew fine well that facts appeal to the left-hand logical side of the brain. Their skills and talents as storytellers, actors, makers and singers appeal to the right side of the brain. The centre for language, imagination, creativity, emotions, empathy and connection. They believed in empowering children to become masters of their own destiny. Rather than a passive theatrical adventure, the Wild Things believed in transforming children into active participants of the story without an overtly prescribed educational agenda. This would be something that grew organically from engaging creatively and directly from the outside world. As narrator, I will start by sharing a story about how stories came to be. I have adapted this to be told with specific references to the local community and area. This is an interactive story that requires audience participation, which will lead them to our promenade theatrical experience and enable them to make their own stories to share as I guide them around the nature reserve. Ecologically literate stories can re-enchant our surroundings and retrain our senses to perceive more of the world around us. We can form relationships, not with nature in general, but with particular trees, streams, places and all their inhabitants. That's why Indigenous cultures have always used them as their main form of learning about how to thrive and maintain balance in a place. We were inspired by Jeanette Winterson's retelling of Hansel and Gretel due to its feminist revamp. As a company of self-proclaimed feminists, we were very keen to push the feminist agenda of Hansel and Greta, working together to defeat greedy guts, as opposed to many fairy tales where the female character is often portrayed as the damsel in distress, who is saved by the male character. This perpetuates the issue of gender inequality as it reinforces the stereotype that women need to be saved or rescued. It's 2020 now and we know that these stereotypes are a load of rubbish, much like the rubbish that used to consume St Nick's. Our intentions as a theatre company are to fight back against these rigid structures placed upon us by the patriarchy. We want to encourage children to ditch their technology and play outside once again, no matter what gender they identify with. I believe that by embodying the character of Greta, a brave, goal-getting character who fights back against a stereotypical damsel in distress will encourage children to be future stewards of the environment and deciders of their own destiny. The character Greta was inspired by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg, a fabulous example of a female role model, which fits in perfectly with our environmentalist agenda. Hello and welcome to St Nick's Nature Reserve, an ex landfill site that my brother and I turn into a magical forest with the help of our father planting acorns from acorn trees, chestnuts from chestnut trees and apple pips from apple trees. My name is Greta and this is my brother Hansel. We're here today to defeat our great greedy aunt, Greedy Guts, and she's 10 feet tall and five foot wide and she's here today. She overconsumes in every sense of the word, eating and buying and sleeping and crying. All she ever wants is more, more, more. But alas, nature warriors, we must defeat her today before she cuts down all the trees and makes the birds fly away. We are keen to embody capitalism in Western society through the character of Greedy Guts. We are aware that many people's lifestyle choices fit in with Greedy Guts, ourselves included, which is why we want to adapt the character from Winston's book, 
to represent other consumerism in general rather than criticising individuals' lifestyle choices. As a company, we want to inspire people to make more eco-conscious lifestyle choices through connecting them to a specific place local to them, in this case, St Nick's. We are hoping this will result in individuals intertwining their lifestyle choices with nature, not separate to it. I don't care about the world. All I care about is my stomach, and I'm hungry. And if you haven't seen any microwaves, I'm eating you all. Be the hero of your own story. No damsels in distress today. My brother and I can work together to send greedy guts away. But we need your help too to defeat the over-consumers. So step outside and come into the forest and turn off your computers. We are entering a golden age of feminist retellings, a fairy tale revolution, bringing women's stories to the fore, a step closer to inequality's execution. The stories we listen to as children dramatically shape who we are as grown-ups. The wise witch Jeanette Winterson wrote this book to show us. A radical retelling of Hansel and Gretel, a tribute to Greta Thunberg, a story we want to bring to life. So young people, activists and adventurers alike, come with us as we tell the story of bravery and courage as Hansel and Greta unite. Right, Heine Meyer, right, I've got it. Heine, Heine. Heine Meyer. Meyer. Yeah. Heine Meyer. Yeah, very good. Right, three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, Kath Heine Meyer. Now, I've got a couple of questions for you. Now, the first question is, how can we use stories to re-engage communities to start to care more of our environment? Well, I think that the first place to start is by remembering that there's no such thing as the environment as such. There's more particular people and particular communities who live in particular places and everything all around them is part of their environment. So the soil under their feet and the air they're breathing and the particular trees that they really love yeah. and uh, particular food plants that they depend on. So I think that we can have the illusion that we're not connected to all of those things in our advanced capitalist society yeah. and that, that we are just like floating free of those things. But if stories can really remind us that they're people too in a certain sort of way and, and we're connected with them, we can have relationships with them and our, our drama and our storytelling can be all about those relationships. That's amazing. Just one more question while you're here. How can we turn eco-anxiety into a story of hope? That's a big question. I know, sorry about difficult that. difficult question, but um, I think stories can, can tell forward yeah. and they can suggest alternative possible futures because um, we, can, we can get into this way of thinking, this TINA thinking is called there is no alternative, like the, the current path that society's on, that the economy is on, is the only possible one. But in fact, there are a lot of different possible ways of running an economy and running a society. And lots of people are already running them in different ways on small scales all over the world. So we can tell those stories for a start and show people alternative futures and a, and a sort of path to get to them. Um, and we can also, stories can also remind people of their ability to collaborate and to work together and, and, and imaginatively rehearse how they would get to better futures yeah. together. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. Following on from Kath's answers, the wild things drew inspiration from her responses. We have incorporated an outdoor play session that we will facilitate at the end of our promenade performance. This will entail groups imaginatively building boggets and dens and building a more sustainable community in the woods at St Nick's, opening up conversations about how we can build a better future together. Our activity hopes to help participants develop a deeper relationship with St Nick's rather than experience it as a place to pass through, to see it as a place of interconnection and a place to ultimately care about. The Promenade Theatre is suited to this setting as St Nick's is historical in nature and site-specific. Promenade Theatre is a modern-day version of medieval staging on pageant wagons or mansions. The use of simple costumes and props helped us define our characters in our radical retelling of Hansel and Greta by Jeanette Winterson, namely, Greedy Guts! Hansel Greta and the witch. 
We have been inspired by EcoDrama, a theatre company that uses outdoor play and storytelling to inspire children to be creative, imaginative and to help the planet. EcoDrama's Out to Play project collaborates with communities to explore the role of drama, storytelling and outdoor learning. Since their debut in 2007, they have reached over 75,000 children and their work is featured in schools, communities and arts festivals in Scotland. By educating young audiences and training school teachers, they remind us that we're living on an amazing planet and it's our responsibility to change our ways. Alongside Ecodrama, we've also been influenced by Rusticus, a provider of fresh air adventures, a combination of interactive performance and a good old walk outdoors. Rusticus allow their stories to be inspired by the different seasons, which we are hoping to take forward in our work too. We are working towards a promenade style interactive performance which encourages transgenerational participation and thus brings a connection not only with nature but with each other. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. Once upon a time there was a young boy who loved to dance in the trees. He played from sunrise to sundown. He made friends with the birds and the bees. The whole wide world at his feet, his imagination ran free, until one strange old day when people became fixated with screams. The outside world became lonely. The boy played out no more. The birds and the bees kept themselves to themselves. Going outside was a chore. But alas, my nature warriors, our time now is here to re-engage with the world around us, with our friends and our family here. We have become so disenchanted with nature, it's all too easy to forget that we have the whole wide world at our fingertips. Don't give up on me yet. So join us, the wild things, as we embark on this adventure to reconnect, reimagine, reignite, and go on this journey together. Restore the bare necessities, recycle all your plastics, please. We can make the world a better place. Turn off your lights, don't waste all of your time sitting inside. Go see the sights, the birds, the trees, reduce your waste and help us please. When you look under those rocks and plants, take a glance at those fancy ants and help our lovely planet go back green. Restore the bare necessities, recycle all your plastic please, we can make the world a better place. Restore the bare necessities so all the bees can rest at ease and help our lovely planet go back green. We looked at eco drama and visiting schools. We want to make nature magic and cool. Come to St. Nick's way in the trees, join in with us and you will see. The wild things are on a mission today, so come outside and let's go play. <laughs> Are you some really ready? Yeah. yeah. It's quite bizarre. It's not in. <laughs> right, thank you for joining today, Kathy and I. I can't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's not again.